So good morning or good night, depending on where you are in the world. And welcome to another interview of The Shield Dude on a Couch. I'm your host, Hector. And today I have Fritz Souls. He's the singer for the band Frontal Boundary. And they're a band from uh, Los Angeles, California. And they play dark, electronic, aggressive music. So uh, pretty cool stuff. You know, I got reminded of like industrial metal uh, meets like electronic music. And I, I got into electronic music, this type of electronic music in the 90s. So it was a cool thing to listen to. So first of all, Chris, uh, how are you today? I'm doing good. It's Tuesday, so I'm just good to be home from work. So I just jumped right in and yeah, here we are. Nice. So the band, you know, I, I I listened to the to the album that came out. It came, shutting down came out in September twenty seventh. So it's been out a few weeks now, and yeah, it's a very interesting record because it sounds like the type of electronic dance music that would be playing while the world is ending. <laughs> That's awesome. At least you're having fun and dancing while it's going down, right? So. Yes. Yes. There's some yeah. I know there's some interesting sound effects in some of the songs. So I, I was wondering where you got them from. So uh, for people who, you know, haven't heard Frontal Boundary, tell me, you know, like a, like a one minute uh, pitch from the band. Yeah. All right. No problem. Um, so Frontal Boundary is a mixture of all that aggressive uh, vocal style, but with like the melody that's carrying it, very danceable, but also hits the emotions of all these melodies hitting with the rough vocals and all that. So when you just said it's like the end of the world kind of thing, but like, oh, we're still going down, but we're going to dance. It's kind of the aggressive electronic nature of it. Um, like I said, though, we also bring in some um, other elements like the melody driven stuff, which Brendan, who started this project back in, 2000 and like four or two or whatever a long long time ago um he because i just joined back in 2019 so um it's been a progressive and changing and changing and changing over time so now it's very we're finding we're finding that little that little piece that that dancey electronic but also very aggressive in nature um but you know not hitting the same topics as old aggressive we're hitting like normal people stuff like emotions and anger and all that all that stuff so um yeah it's just very so it's fun it's been really fun actually so i mean that's kind of what frontal boundary is is just that all that raw emotion with these aggressive electronics and melody driven um things i mean that's it yeah yeah <clears throat> and uh, i remember back in the 90s uh electronic music used to be like happy go lucky but then there were bands that put it like darker mixed rock. Like for example, I, I love the Prodigy. Then you have I just a lost band. Your voice. Oh, can you, you hear me it? now? <laughs> so you know, I got a lot into like I remember back in the '90s, the electronic music used to be like more happy, danceable. But then uh, there came bands like Apex Twin, uh, uh, the Prodigy, and it made oh. like more aggressive but i think the first like uh like electronic like uh that it was like darker was when i saw the movie blade uh oh, yeah <laughs> yeah i don't know who played that but the beginning in the soundtrack eh, that that felt like dark electronic music so what i was listening to your track it's like maybe they should use your music when you make when they remake the new blade yeah like, that'd be sick <laughs> if, if they do like a like a dance like a party type of scene. So, uh, and, and your vocals, yeah, they're kind of like aggressive and uh, uh, in style. So like uh, what, when you're, when you're doing vocals for this project, what was your approach that you wanted to, to vocally with, with Frontal Boundary? Uh, so um, I am a big fan of all aggressive types of music. It would be that metal to, you know, some, hip hop or whatever aggressive is aggressive so when i was you know going through some of this old stuff because a lot of this newer stuff is stuff that i've personally worked on that i've had it sitting on my computer for i don't know how long uh brendan the same way and then we brought in jason same thing we all work very well together um and we're all kind of floating around in that same idea of uh we like that 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 aggressive that very screaming because that that pulls you i mean it's very 
the music itself is completely different. Like like you said, it's very dancey. But we pull that aggressive. In. It's like it's like bringing metal aspects into this dance music. So it makes it you know pretty fun. It keeps that aggressiveness and keeps you moving as well. So this uh, you know the album's called Shutting Down. So the first song is called Resurrect Me. Uh, so tell me, because you, right from the start, you start really aggressive. Tell me a little bit about what Resurrect Me is all about. It's basically, um, in Wait. short, it's about, you know, uh, trying to restart. You're trying to get um, a new take on something. Bring me back. Like, hey, I've I've messed up a lot. I've done a lot of really crappy things, and I've done, you know, whatever. It's just about being rebrought back into it. Like, leave your old stuff behind. Let's not worry about the past. Let's worry about what's happening right now and what's going on in the future. So we, you have to make that kind of aggressive. It's like, screw the past. Let's just keep going kind of thing. So. Okay. Yeah. And, and, and yeah. it really starts the album really well. And on that track, uh, I, I hear like someone, like there's a part where someone is talking and I don't know where you got that from because uh, <laughs> I don't, it kind of reminded me there's a band called, uh, nothing more and they have someone like and it sounded like the same dude i'm like i wonder if it's like from the same uh dude so what what's that person that's doing like a speech you know it's funny is that uh my the keyboard player jason he is like the craziest when it comes to sampling so i i like i can listen to these songs and i will hear something that i haven't heard before in the back but he, yeah. he's sampled so many different music movies and uh we've got like all different types of samples throughout the whole CD for me to sit here and be like, so, Oh, it's yeah. this one. I won't remember. <laughs> because without a chance, the last 10 seconds, it has to, I want, uh, was that from the don't oh, be no. a menace to South Central while drinking, you're using the hood. Uh, the part, <laughs> because he says like, like, I'll... hold on a second. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There's so many, I think some of them are like, there's SLC punk in there. I think that there's a uh, cyber uh, where there's, uh, a whole bunch. There's a whole bunch. Memoirs of a Geisha, I think, are also in there somewhere. So yeah, uh, there's a there's a lot of samples uh, sprinkled in throughout. Uh, well, there's another song at the end that's, <laughs> that I found a bit funny. That where you're talking like at the end, everyone's going to be everyone's fighting about the same things. And you mentioned something about Oreos. I'm like, where the <laughs> hell is that from? <laughs> yeah, uh, pretty. Yeah, those are those are some really good movies. Like he's got, like I said, he is like the king of all these samples. So like I even have to listen and be like, man, I know that sound bad, but I just don't know what it's from. So yeah, I uh, don't know where that one is from. I'm, I'm like, everyone's going to be fighting about Oreos then 50 years later. So I find it, it's funny because like I said, this is like a soundtrack to the end of the world that's and, and the album's called shutting down uh yeah. so tell me like was that the vibe that you were going from for when you were like doing this album um i mean so the way it happened is that we made that first track which was resurrect me that was very first resurrect right me. and then um and then we you know put it out in the world and we're like hey you know whatever Let's see what we what would happen, right? And we got some good feedback, so we're like, we're gonna keep going because we kind of wanted to do this anyway. Um, so we kept going, we kept pushing, and then we wrote the next track, which ended up being shutting down. And I I wrote it based on like you know everyday things, like how I was feeling about certain things and how I see things and whatever. Um, so then I started writing it, and then then I wrote a lot of the lyrics based off of that song, the rest of the album, because it's about Basically, the album is a story about how somebody can be reborn and going through all the things again and going through all the problems, all the emotional turmoil that they have, including the songs like Lie to Me, where you have to deal with somebody that's blatantly in your face lying about things uh, or, you know, forgotten because you feel like you just, you know, you're forgotten. Right. So mm -hmm. there's all those all those tracks. I mean. And then the last song, it's me admitting blame that, hey, maybe maybe I'm the problem kind of thing. So it's really about the whole album is kind of like turmoil about how you as a person is trying to grow and grow and grow. But there's things that keep getting in the way and you're trying to overcome those things. And, you know, eventually it's, you know, something you just got to deal with. Right. So. Yeah. So it's uh, yeah, dealing with obstacles and. and 
you have a few like there's a few guest stars on the album. You have her own world as Sadie. Tell me a lot about the guest spots on the on the tracks. Her own world is a wonderful band. They're out in Poland. Um, they are friends of ours. I've known them for quite a while now. <laughs> I've played I've played some shows with them out in Europe. Um, and then Sadie is my daughter. So <laughs> oh, she, nice. yeah, yeah, yeah. She helped me actually write some of that song, Darkness Closing In. And she is actually the female voice in that song after the chorus. And I got her to sing it and she just turned 11. So it's pretty cool. Oh, that's not, that's nice. So yeah. the, the, she doesn't think her daddy's cringe. <laughs> because my 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 sons and daughter like uh, they don't care what they do they'll think like yeah it, it kind of sucks so uh what's your process um so the process about lyrics is kind of um i i go through the song we write the song together um we go through everything where we all kind of just throw throw it at each other and then i will sit there and i will depending on how i'm you know writing about like Shutting down, for example, I started writing the chorus first. So I started writing that chorus and I wrote, you know, I'm shutting down and I'm falling away. And then after that, I was able to then write that that emotion about somebody, you know, just wanting to be done. Right. I need you more than I can say. Like, I need I need help. So then the other verses I just wrote basically from that standpoint of like, hey, I'm trying to do all this stuff, but I, I need help. Right. So. Um, that's kind of how I personally write all lyrics is I start like with the hook, with the chorus, and then I build mm -hmm. off of that. Right. So. Okay. Yeah. So, sounds like a solid process. So I want to show the artwork for the album uh, so we can talk about the artwork. So here it is uh, for shutting down. Uh, it's a pretty futuristic artwork. And I think in the music video, you have a music video for this shutting down. You can, watch this so tell me a little bit about this artwork so our our friend vlad he actually helped design this he did a wonderful job um he is a great graphic design artist and he does great stuff so we kind of wanted this you know dystopian kind of look and it's it's kind of like a server so it's like a it's like a like a like a server but it looks kind of like a castle too right so like a tower yeah. of building but it's all decrepit and there's like these these tentacles flying off of it but it, it is it's kind of like a dystopian server like the server is running it like the universe like on an ai kind of thing like it's running like hey in this world of all this artificial intelligence this is like trying to hold up basic you know whatever you know art and all this it's that's kind of the concept is like the dystopian future and how we got to keep pushing forward even though everything seems to be shutting down right so yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. a pretty cool artwork. So uh, I'm guessing that you guys' life has to be very interesting. What's it like at a frontal boundary show? Um, we try to put as much energy as we can. I mean, we also like to have fun. I mean, personally, I I really enjoy doing it. Um, and I do get nervous because I'm usually a drummer. Like my other, my other bands I play in, I'm the electronic drummer. So I'm like in the back. So now it's me in the front. It's a little bit different, right? So yeah, um, I try to, you know, you have to, you have to put it in there. You can't just be sitting up there like a like someone just sitting on a log up front. You've got to put as much as you can into it. Otherwise, no one's going to want to watch, right? Because you're bringing the music, but you got to bring the show too. So yeah, but, but it's I guess it's, it has to be like full, full of energy, like the crowd, uh, the crowd that 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 goes to a show like that and i think like uh i think the type of music that you play it's this aggressive electronic you know a lot of metalheads are into this type of music so it's a music that translates well uh what, what what's the the crowd like at, at your shows so um i mean we just played one in, in santa ana with uh sitd uh it was really cool like there's a lot of people dancing. You had all sorts of different types of people, big, big burly dudes with tattoos everywhere. And then like <laughs> people wearing like top hats. It was, it was a cool crowd. Like it was just everybody and then everybody's just enjoying the music. And I mean, that's really all you kind of, you got to look forward to is everybody just vibing. I mean, you just got to vibe sometimes. Right. Yeah. 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 Maybe you, you guys being uh, in LA, I think LA is a town that accepts like different styles of music. And you know, it's a, uh, it's a melting pot of like different, like, you know, like ethnicities and everything. Uh, 
Uh, so I don't know. That's what I think of LA. Like LA is very acceptance to like different styles of music. Uh, so for you growing up, like, uh, like what got you into music? Like, you know, what bands inspired you? Well, I'm actually not from here at all. I'm from the Midwest. So I'm from like Oklahoma and Missouri. So okay. I, I was surrounded by stuff that I didn't like. <laughs> so, that's why you left. <laughs> yeah, that's why I left. Um, so I was always into like, I mean, I grew up when, you know, there's metal forever. Metal was everywhere in Springfield, Missouri. Um, and it was cool. But then I, you know, I found like, all these cool industrial bands like Skinny Puppy and Ministry and Aisha's in New Botten and like all these cool bands that I would never think about. And then like the new metal scene came out and you got like Coal Chamber and all Corn came out and all those bands. And I gravitated towards that that combination of sounds like that electronic, that that industrial, that, you know, angry sound. And then you had like you know, at the beginning you had like this agrotech push that was like very aggressive electronic. That's like Suicide Commando and all that stuff. And I'm, I went right to that stuff. Like I love that stuff. Cause I called that like the new metal of electronic music, right? It was the same kind okay. of same time frame. Um, and being in the Midwest, I mean, it's kind of easy to gravitate and go to like something that's so angry because there's a lot of things there that made me angry. Right. So it was like easy to just, gravitate to and I'm, and i listen to like everything which i i could say all day long but if anybody knows me they know that i listen to like i on my phone if you pull up my playlist it's like spice girls or taylor swift and then it's like <laughs> doom metal you know and then it's like dark funeral and like so it's like i'm all over the place but yeah i mean that's exactly why i mean that's what i gravitated towards that and i liked that ability to just let loose and dance with certain types of music I mean, there's times for pits, then there's times for just hanging out and dancing in a club. You know what I mean? So it's like, I liked both of those worlds and some, you know, I, I was very drawn by that. I was drawn by that. So that's why, you know, I kind of fell into it. So Yeah, I think in the beginning of the 2010s, maybe when Korn did that album with Skrillex, that's oh, also yeah. was like, yeah, that, that's also was very big because, you know, like they brought like that sound of that type of music, uh, well, more EDM stuff that he did uh, with their style. So yeah, pretty, pretty, it's pretty cool stuff. So so uh, so you guys already the album's out a few weeks now. Uh, where, do you have physical copies or is it all like digital? We do, we do. Uh, remission uh, in the I can send the link or it's in the remission. Um, they actually do have. I actually just got a copy myself and uh, it's cool. All like right. it's awesome to have. Uh, there is physicals, and we are playing a show um, in New Orleans um, next next weekend, Sunday next weekend, um, for the Dark Arts Fest in New Orleans. It's going to be really cool, and we are going to have shirts and CDs. So that, that's the first for us because we usually have one or the other or nothing at all, right? So we kind of just have to keep going. So yeah. The Dark yeah. Arts Fest, that sounds like it's going to be a fun time. Oh, it's definitely going to be fun. I. We got actually funny is last year I was playing with one of my other bands in this festival that they're throwing and they hit us up the day before because Brendan was just going to come and meet us there because he actually lives in Oklahoma. So he was going to meet us there uh, just to come hang out with us because we haven't seen him in forever. And the day before I landed, they're like, hey, can Frontal Boundary do a show? And me and Brendan never practiced anything. Like, it was just me and him <laughs> at that time. And so we're like, sure, why not? And we did. And we played the show. We played six songs. So, I mean, and that's what kind of lit the fire under us, you know, to be like, all right, let's just keep going. Let's push, let's push. So, yeah, it was, yeah. that's, so it's good to go back and actually be able to perform a full length, you know, set instead of like six songs that we kind of threw together at the last minute. So that'd be cool. So yeah, so you had you had you you perform under pressure on that one. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I may have a little bit of drinks for sure. I've uh, always put karaoke them in my room is one thing, not in front of people, right? <laughs> no, I, I, no, I'm guessing it wouldn't be uh, the same <laughs> the same thing at all. So yeah, so I, I'll put the link for people who want to you know get it, and it's also on Bandcamp, and you have a few lyric videos. I think uh, I saw a few of them. 
uh, in your in your YouTube page. So, uh, what's next for the band after this concert that you're doing? Like, what are the immediate future plans? So, we already have some more shows booked. We just haven't we haven't uh, released them yet because we're still waiting on finalized things. Mm -hmm. but once we do, we will have some more shows, even potentially by the end of this year. Uh, probably one in LA. Uh, next year we have some shows booked. Again, we're waiting to, you know, tell everybody when once we do. But we are, or we already have. Uh, we're sending a single off, another single not related to the CD for a compilation album. It's an old song that we revamped and made new for this compilation, which is really cool. Electronic Saviors. Um, and then it'll be after that. I mean, we're kind of just keep on going. I mean, I've already started working on new music for you know, further down because I like to be a little bit ahead instead of behind. So that in remixes, we've been doing a lot of remixes. So that's, it's always fun to do because you put your spin on someone else's work. It's awesome. So Yeah, no, pretty cool. So I, I would recommend this to people who like dark electronic music, like the type of bands that we've been uh, discussing, uh, you will get into it. So Chris, uh, anything you would like to say to the people before we go? I uh, just thank you so much. Like, it's really cool that um, everybody is pulling together to, you know, listen to this music. And thank you so much for having me. And I hope everybody likes what they hear. Yeah. So Frontal Boundary Shutting Down is out now digitally. And you can also pre uh, buy it physically if you choose yeah. to. Uh, so I'll put the link so you can follow the band. So, Chris, you know, I want to thank you for taking some time. Uh, you. from your night in LA to talk here to me in Puerto Rico. So until next time, Couchers, this is Hector, the Shield Dude on a Couch, and I'll see you all right here on the couch. Thank you and goodbye.